first? Yes, first of all, thank you very much. And uh, once again, we welcome Dr. Chung Sien Chen, as well as uh, Vivian and Mario Marasigan of the OE. Um, to the province of Ilocos Norte, you're all welcome. We had a dinner the night before, and I think last night we had a walking tour of Lawag City. So uh, I hope that uh, even as they work very, very hard throughout the day, uh, they're able to visit some of the sites of Ilocos Norte. We're very proud and privileged to have them here as uh, this is some kind of recognition and uh, validation of our efforts in renewable energy here in the province of Ilocos Norte. Thank you, Madam Governor. From doc, uh, Dr. Chen. Thank you. Uh, at first, I want to thank the Governor and uh, DOE uh, Philippines to host the, the meeting. And uh, Econor means that the uh, expert group on the new and renewable energies. And uh, we are happy to be here, have this meeting, because I think that uh, this place is a good place to help the new and renewable energies. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shen. And from our co-chairman, Director Maris Egan. Thank you very much, and good afternoon. Uh, first, I would like to express our utmost gratitude to the local governments of Ilocos Norte, particularly the Honorable Governor Amy Marcos. Uh, we never expected the hospitality of uh, the Ilocanos as exemplified by the Honorable Governor. We, uh, I would like to say that uh, we were never wrong to choose Ilocos Norte as the site for the AGN Red uh, meeting. And uh, we were able to highlight not only the renewable energy developments in Ilocos Norte, but also how beautiful and how hospitable the Ilocanos are. So I am really very grateful on the local government and of course including you, the media, because you are even here to uh, even help us promote what we have been doing in terms of renewable energy in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Director Matasigan. Okay, a few reminders to our media colleagues. Um, before uh, we raise your question, please state your name and your affiliation and the panelists you wish to direct your question. Okay, so let's start off with, uh, by the way, I am your moderator. I am Christina Arcedon, the Deputy Director of BIA Region 1. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's start off with uh, Freddy Lazaro, the uh, Provincial Manager of PIA Ilocos Norte. Okay, uh, thank you, Maki. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, I was, uh, good afternoon. I wish to throw my question to ma'am Vivian, please. Uh, can you give us an idea how does uh, EGN Red determine which country should host the various meetings of member economies? And my follow-up is, why was Ilocos Norte chosen as the host province for the EJN Red 44th meeting? Uh, you mean why we choose here? Yeah. Or, um, actually, from the last meeting was in the Chiang Mai of Thailand, and uh, we always um, ask the members if they want to host the next meeting, and uh, the Philippines are very generous to, to provide the uh, the, uh, they say they want to host the next one, and uh, usually we just respect the host of which city that they want to host uh, the meeting. So it's an, actually it's not really our decision, but uh, uh, we are very glad that we can come here. It's a very beautiful city and um, very passionate and fruitful for hosting a host meeting. Okay. And, uh, by the way, we also think that the uh, Philippines have the good potential of the renewable energy, especially for the uh, what's called the photovoltaic and uh, with the wind power. So I think that uh, to have the meeting here is a good decision for uh, uh, economic secretaries. And uh, with the support of the governor and uh, the, the DOE, I think that it's a good place, a good decision to have the, this meeting, and uh, we also have some uh, members coming from the, like the Japan, like, like the Korea, like the Thailand, like, like the Singapore, and uh, also have the United States, and some also called the uh, 
uh, international association like the International Renewable Energy Association, Arena, and uh, also have the, some uh, what's so called uh, uh, APEC, APEC, APEC research centers, and uh, we think that the uh, uh, Philippines is a good potential for the renewable energy, and uh, I, I think that uh, to hold meeting here is good. And uh, especially we have uh, some uh, good place to hear. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good morning, I'm Leilani Adriano, a writer of Ilocos Times and a correspondent of Philippine Daily Inquirer. My question is directed to Director Mario Marasigan. Uh, sir, how do we intend to balance uh, power sources considering the difficulty to generate quantities of electricity and the re reliability of supply as far as uh, renewable energy is concerned? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, now we are coming up with the Philippine policy that our ultimate goal would be 30% um, contribution from the renewable energy uh, and we have to not only to meet the target but also to sustain it. Um, this will help the Philippines to have a very well-balanced uh, energy mix because uh, we care for the environment and at the same time it's an issue in terms of sourcing our fuels. So we are always looking for the cheaper fuels, but the cheapest means of fuels is to develop our own. So that's our target, 30% of the energy mix. Thank you. Yes. Uh, just one follow-up, sir. Uh, how, do, how do we make uh, renewable energy affordable to everyone? Well, you know, the technology for renewable energy uh, is quite, uh, I would say, the, the cost of putting up the renewable energy facilities are now declining. And in fact, uh, five years ago, when we were still developing the feed-in tariff system for the country, the cost of uh, solar PV uh, is within the, within the $3 mark per watt peak. Nowadays, there are now technologies that can be at par with uh, the more expensive relative to coal uh, facilities. Wind has already, uh, wind technology has already uh, made its peak in terms of development and with the enhancement of the technology, the price is also decreasing. Now for biomass, geothermal and hydros, these are, uh, not, uh, these are not considered new. There are already plenty of developments in terms of these technologies and the prices are already competitive. We are pushing for these technologies, and the challenge here in the Philippines is the promotion of the resource development because most of our resources are located not in urban areas, but rather in rural areas. Thank you. I hear it. This is your time, Lani. But I'm going to ask the DOE. Yes, affordability is a real issue. Um, I think DOE should... Um, manage expectations in as much as the reality has been. Um, no decrease in the electric bill of the household at every month. So, um, this has been uh, the bane of our campaign for renewable energy because all Ilocano households had expected that every family would feel a reduction. And yet that has not come through. So perhaps the DOE can manage expectations and explain that. Um, how uh, this can happen in as much as we were promised all sorts of things. You said that the wind has gone down. That's simply not the case. At least here on the local grassroots level, the uh, electric bills have been going up. I know that it's a complicated system. Uh, wind generation, trans, um, the uh, transmission, uh, the distribution, it's a long procedure. But uh, for the ordinary citizen, it's your electric bill that bothers you and that you have to cough up to pay for every month. That's really been the question. I think in the realm of managing expectations for renewables as well, people talk too much about green jobs. Green jobs that haven't been in the offing. So perhaps it's also time for a reality check. There, whereas we attempt to be clean and green after the construction and building stage, there are not too many jobs. 
except for a few extremely expert and highly qualified engineers who go up to calibrate the turbines. Yes, if I may, ma'am. Yes, uh, realities are still uh, a big challenge, not only for the Department of Energy, but also for the Energy Regulatory Commission, who is our authority in terms of pricing. Um, we have been trying to collaborate with its, with the, the, I mean, the two agencies would like to really collaborate in uh, determining the actual cost of renewable energy. In fact, uh, very soon, the Energy Regulatory Commission will be uh, issuing a new resolution on the feed-in tariff rate for the solar energy. And definitely, it's not the same as the 968 that we had, uh, that we have, which was issues about uh, two years ago. Now, on the actual cost of the generation, yes, renewable energy, particularly the variable energy such as the wind and solar, is still high comparative, uh, as we compare it with the uh, coal uh, power thermal plants. That is primarily because um, we still have to iron out some, some of the mechanisms under the, for utilizing renewable energy. For one, Greed is a challenge for us, as you may know, there remains to be a constriction for our grid systems. We, you know, we cannot immediately transfer generation uh, or export the generation from one place to another because of line constriction. Aside from that, uh, we are still looking for the possibilities of coming up with projects embedded right in the areas where they are supposed to be uh, there are supposed to be huge consumption. As you may know, all the generation of your wind farms are supposedly, uh, supposedly to be exported to the main grid down to Manila because all Filipinos or all grid users are assumed to utilize wind energy generation and share also the cost through the feed-in tariff system. However, if embedded generators will sell directly to the distribution utilities, our saving would be more on the transmission cost. Because right there where the electricity is generated, it will be consumed directly. Also, what we are looking at is the, uh, the compliance of our renewable energy developers in providing uh, the benefits to the host communities. Um, right now, the feed-in tariff system has just started. Um, I, still ha I am still, uh, I have to check uh, because I received information that uh, I believe it's Monday or yesterday that the feed-in tariff certificate of compliance to the three wind generators here in Ilocos Norte was approved by the ERC. So that means this is the first time that they will receive the actual payment from the feed-in tariff system. What they are acquiring before is through the wholesale electricity spot market. So. Mechanisms are being, uh, still being ironed out. There are some hitches, there are some challenges, and these are part of what we considered as uh, not only the birth pains, but the early stages birth pains of utilizing renewable energy in the Philippines. As, as you all know, uh, Ilocos Norte is the very first host for wind energy generation, and we are developing our experiences through that. Uh, as far as job is concerned, yes, during construction where uh, most of the jobs are, but since these are renewable energy, the actual monitoring and operation of the facilities uh, may not entail, entail uh, numerous jobs because, as we all know, renewable energy technologies are almost maintenance-free. Thank you. I am Ed Marines of... Uh, DWFB. I would like to show this question to Director Marasigan. Most of our electric consumers cannot yet appreciate the existence of the renewable energy plants as an alternative source of power supply because of the high feed-in tariff. Is there any possibility, sir, that the Department of Energy could make a policy that the host provinces of these renewable energies will have a special feed-in uh, uh, tariff so that the people could feel the advantage of the existence of a windmill or solar projects in their respective places? Yeah. Well, 
Actually, there is a uh, uh, there is a mechanism, a different mechanism, not the feed-in tariff, that will allow the direct sale of generation from the generator to the end user consumer. This is what we call the under the open access and retail competitions, the distribution utilities should be uh, able to identify who are the contestable market and uh, who are the non-contestables. And the contestable markets has the option to buy electricity directly to any generator that's under the open access. And the capacity limitation is that under the open access and retail competition, it's huge. It's about seven point, uh, 750 kilowatts to one megawatt. But under a renewable energy mechanism, which we are now trying to harmonize with the open access, is the green energy option. Where the green energy option, which allows any consumer with a consumption demand of at least 100 kilowatts. So from 750 or one megawatt down to 100 kilowatts. So small and medium enterprises who consumes uh, electricity over or within the 100 kilowatt limit, then they may have the option to buy directly. And by buying directly, we can actually decrease the cost of transmission because it will have uh, a direct buy and sell agreement with the generator. Yes, we are uh, trying to finalize that guidelines. The National Renewable, yes, ma'am. The National Renewable Energy Board uh, is regularly meeting to finalize this mechanism, and soon as that it is ready, then uh, we will submit that policy to the Energy Regulatory Commission for the appropriate approval. Thank you. Yes, I, I'm Rolando Ose of uh, DCJC, and uh, my question is addressed to Director um, Marasigan. This is about local concern of fishermen within the area of uh, the windmill farm. How could we address the problem uh, about uh, the scaling away of uh, fish along Bangi Bay uh, uh, during the operation of the windmill within the area, Director? Thank you very much for that question. And it's quite interesting because there is no direct relation as far as wind energy generation and uh, fish migration. In fact, in other countries, there are offshore installation, not on the bay, but on the waters. So there is no direct relation as far as fish migration is concerned. And uh, since the wind energy generation uh, does, not, uh, does not have any water that throws back to the sea, we, there is no expected uh, uh, pollution that will happen. What may be happening would be the vibration created by the rotation of the wind turbines. But that may be very minimal and there's no proven study that would directly correlate fish abundance, fish migration with wind energy generation. Thank you. Uh, we need to elaborate. Uh, I uh, think I know what our uh, media is referring to, and that's essentially the environmental and quarrying violations that uh, were an issue during the construction of some of these windmills. I think some of the coral was destroyed, inevitably impacting upon fish sanctuaries along the bay thereafter destroying much livelihood among the communities. In many cases, these have been uh, uh, stopped and also uh, there have been um, um, efforts to provide livelihood for the communities who are impacted upon. But uh, the reality is there continues to be uh, some level in the construction phase of environmental damage. Totoo yun, dahil uh, talaga napakalalaki ng turbina, kung ano yung nakikita mo sa itaas, ganun din yung hinuhukay sa ibaba. E puro coral yun, nababalitaan pa namin, pati limestone, kinakwari, at uh, dinidikdik. Kaya, eto nga, uh, inevitably, masisira talaga yung marine life. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Ronald Valdris of Radio Nang Bayan. I will address uh, my uh, question to Dr. Shen. 
Uh, based on your initial uh, meeting, sir, with your group, uh, what are the best uh, renewable energy that uh, that your group sh uh, will be endorsed to the APEC ministers? And uh, what cooperation should be done with the APEC members to attain the goal of uh, increasing the number of uh, renewable energy in the region, sir? Thank you. I think that uh, economic economy mission just uh, have some mission. First, it will be uh, technology. We can uh, uh, technology trans transfer to the other uh, econ member economy. The second uh, second one will be the uh, strategy. Uh, different economy have different uh, strategy based on their uh, potential of renewable. If, even that. Uh, if the member economy uh, have the good potential of the uh, sunshine, they, they can have the potential to, uh, to develop the photovoltaic or even the wind, uh, wind, uh, wind powers. And so the third one will be the policy, just uh, mentioned that before, uh, uh, mentioned that a different economy have the different uh, policies, uh, just like the fit in tariff, or uh, that United States, they have the uh, portfolio standard. Big based on their uh, member economy, they have different mechanism to promote the uh, so-called uh, renewable energies. And uh, for the APEC regions, that we uh, now we ha have to uh, to have some uh, uh, the progress like the in the APEC region, we just to, to double the renewable energy goal in the year of 2030s. That means that. Uh, uh, in the year of 2030, the uh, renewable in this region will be double be, uh, based on the year of uh, 2010. So we have some, uh, we so-called uh, 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 missions, and uh, for the corporations, we have the, uh, the cooperation in the, in the uh, epic uh, economy, like the, we cooperate with the uh, EGDA. EGDA means the data analysis in the in, uh, epic regions, we cooperate with uh, APEC. Uh, APEC means uh, APEC Research Centers, and we also cooperate with the international uh, agents, like International Energy Agency, agents, IEA, and also the the Arena, and also the ASEAN. We think that uh, uh, information sharing is important for the whole countries or for the whole uh, APEC regions. So we have the uh, cooperation in the, so the APEC region and uh, cooperation with the other agencies. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm Vicky Aden of Bomboraj, Chilawag. I will address my question to, the, to our beloved Governor. Governor, good afternoon. Uh, Governor, what is now the uh, development of the proposed solar project in uh, Kurimao, Ilocos Norte, and uh, how do we address the problem of reducing trees to be cut? Yes, that's right. That's been the burning issue, and uh, we've discussed with Mirai slash Solar, uh, Solec and Equis, the three companies involved in the, uh, in the um, proposed solar area in uh, Kurimao, They've reduced the number of trees from 1,008, 1,004 to 741 trees. I think that's where we're at today. Uh, inevitably, I accept that um, some trees will have to be cut, but uh, I don't think it's acceptable that so many should be cut. So we're working towards, firstly, reducing the absolute number that need to be destroyed, and secondly, making certain that um, the one to 300 ratio of new trees to be planted per tree to be cut down should be upheld, and upheld in a sustainable way that will benefit the community. So, hindi naman pwede na puros agoho. Dahil yung agoho, ang tagal-tagal naman lumaki. So, isa ng issue yun. Uh, isa pa, kung one is to 300, ang liit naman ng kurimaw, saan pa itatanim? So medyo kinakailangan na magkaroon ng isang reforestation program na komprehensibo at talagang sasagot sa pangangailangan ng mga marginal fishermen, higit sa lahat, and also the farmers who really count on the trees 
to uh, maintain the aquifer and uh, the water reserves, which are now under such threat with the drought that uh, has taken hold here in the province. So, yung pamuna yung problema natin, na talagang uh, itong one is to 300, madaling sabihin. But exactly where will you plant? What will you plant in the short term, in the long term? And will it only be Kurimao? Or are we talking about uh, the entire province? Because after all, the Agos of Ilocos Norte are not in very good shape. Uh, they are a rare pine. And uh, in fact, as we speak here in Fort Ilocandia, um, we are very, very deeply concerned about the virus that's attacked the trees here in uh, the shorefront. Thank you, Go. Good afternoon. I'm Marcel Cristobal from uh, Action Radio. My, I, my question is addressed to Director Marcegan. Sir, what is the focus of your group and researchers for other renewable energy sources, particularly in solar? Um, we have different programs that we are trying to push. Uh, one among which is uh, the provision of solar PVs on the rooftops of private academic institutions. We have run some demo facilities. Uh, three schools have participated uh, in Metro Manila. And the program calls for a no-cost installation for the schools. And the schools will directly buy the generation as payment for the system. And under a cooperation period of 14 years, then uh, the school will eventually own the system. Also, the condition is that the generation of the cellular PVs that will form part of the payment for the system, it should be at least two pesos lower than the grid rate. So that's uh, one of our programs. But uh, what we have what, what we are really pushing through under our household electrification program is the provision of uh, electricity services to areas that are not viable for grid interconnection. So we're talking here of remote, inaccessible communities, sitios, and maybe remote uh, look, sites of uh, communities, especially yung mga IPs natin. No? We're providing 10 or 30 watt peak system these are solar PVs that are installed not only on the rooftop, but also on a standalone system. Yes, ma'am. There are qualifications. Yes, ma'am, meron. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Our target for this year is more than uh, 10,000 households. And uh, the provision of these services entails the cooperation with the local government unit particularly in providing supervisory services in the administration of the local communities. Because we allow the local communities to run and operate the system. We conduct a capacity building not only in terms of operation of the system, but also in terms of management for the entire installations. By the way, the installation will call for a 10 watt and 30 watt peak system, where in household, depending on their level of capacities to consume electricity, will have two to three light bulbs, a radio, a portable radio that is included in the system, and uh, what we receive in most of the communities that we have done, they are always requesting for at least a mobile charger. So, kasama na yun sa system. And uh, we monitor this through our affiliated renewable energy center, and for Ilocos Norte, we have the Don Mariano Marcos University as our affiliated renewable energy center. So, ma'am, most welcome po if you have CDOs or communities that are, that remains to be energized. We need the list uh, so that we can immediately conduct yung tinatawag naming uh, uh, rural rapid appraisal. We have to determine which are the qualified household. We coordinate with the Rural Electric Cooperative, identify. Yes, ma'am? Yeah. So, and then immediately after the uh, conduct of the RRA, identification of the household beneficiaries, we conduct weeding procedures for the installation. After that, then installation of all. Thank you. Uh, Romel Sagusha from uh, Catholic Media Network to Dr. Chen. Dr. Chen, what are the changes of status of current renewable energy projects 
uh, due to the decrease of world oil prices? Uh, I think that uh, it's a good question. Uh, in our meetings, uh, we have a, a talking top, a discussion topic about these issues. What uh, the oil the oil price down? Could it be a factor to promote the uh, renewable energies? And uh, this, according to our discussions, that uh, and according to some uh, report from the international renewable agents, it not have the direct inter interaction between the oil price and the promote the energies. I think that for the energy, energy securities or something like energy mix, uh, promote renewable energies is some kind of important now and in the futures. Especially for the, uh, also call that, especially for the, some uh, rural area or some uh, islands. I think that it, if you have, don't have the uh, good infrastructure of the power truck assistance to provide the photovoltaic in these areas, it's good to give the, the power in these agents. So according to our regions, that we think that uh, it's not the direct interaction between this, these two items. And also we think that uh, to promote renewable is the important in the near future even in the right now. Yeah. Okay, good morning. This question is for Governor uh, Amy Marcos. Um, Governor, uh, how do we ensure that the newly amended CSR Ordinance of Ilocos Norte will be strictly implemented? Oh dear, yes. Um, by definition, corporate social responsibility is voluntary but we also know that good business means it must be good not only for the owners of uh, the wind turbines, but more importantly, it should benefit the people or the community and uh, the planet as well. And finally, the third P, it should be for profit. So therefore, it's important uh, after all that CSR, which in fact is in a way kind of uh, outdated, because we know that it needs to be embedded in the business model. Um, parang sinabi rin ni Director Marasigan, talagang uh, ito'y uh, learning process. Learning process dahil ang renewable ay bago talaga. Yung CSR, gumawa tayo ng sarili nating CSR um, as an experiment rin. Eh. So we're learning in the process na yung CSR Eh, talaga naman tutulong yung ating mga korporasyon. Pero sa kabila nun, it may be necessary eventually to uh, legislate. Hindi na CSR, kundi baka share na sa kanilang ginagawa. Dahil sa extractive industry, sa mining, kitang-kita na may share, di ba? Pero dito sa wind, eh, hangin naman ng Ilocano yan, ha? hangin ng Pilipino. Bakit wala namang share? Kaya hindi ko masagot yun eh. Pag tinatanong ng mga taga-Burgos, taga food, they keep asking, right? Why is it with mining may share? Bakit tayo, dahil hangin, non-extractive, walang share? Hindi ko naman mapaliwanan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mark Masudog of GMA Network. My question is for Director Mario Marasigan. Uh, Director, what is our uh, specific approach to safeguard our ecological system? As we observed, so thousands of trees have been killed, birds and animals were displaced due to loss of habitat as more renewable energy plants are being constructed. And follow-up question, are there new technologies we have developed so far to reduce effect of our energy footprint, Director? Well, oh. We are conducting uh, various studies in terms of uh, really balance, doing a balancing act between energy development and uh, itong effects sa uh, environment. No? Now, we may be looking at the impact of renewable energy projects located in areas where, uh, uh, sabi natin, because these renewable energies are site-specific, so kung nasaan yung resource, dun lang develop. Unlike if we develop uh, add conventional technologies, then they can practically choose the site. It so happens that for renewables, much of our renewable energy resources are located in uh, 
let's say, limited areas, no? agricultural areas or even in forest areas. But we have several laws that we observe, like for example, the Indigenous uh, People's Rights Act and the NIPAS law, the Nationally, National Integrated Protected Areas Management System. So all development projects abide by those rules and by those laws. And no renewable energy projects can be established in areas of national importance. Now, of course, hindi natin maiwanan kung maiwasan na kung hindi covered ng mga ganung law, like for example, relatively urban areas in, sabihin natin, in, uh, in a certain province, like here in Ilocos Norte. But we make sure that the RE developers will follow the environmental standards. Now, ano yung balancing act na ginagawa natin? Hindi lang yung environmental effect, but also yung health effects. Kasi we need electricity. So to generate that electricity, alin yung less ang impact sa atin? Would it be better to put up more coal facilities or would it be better to develop more renewables? And at the same time, we should also look into the balance of the use of our money. With regards to fossil fuels, much of our requirement are being imported from other countries, whether it's oil, it's coal. So there is always an attendant cost to that. In fact, we don't buy in pesos, we always buy in dollars. Diba? Samantalang, if we develop our natural resources, then no dollar foreign exchange is, uh, is involved during operation. During construction, yes, there may still be some foreign exchange required because the technologies are all imported. But mostly for the entire maximum 25 to 50 years operation of the facilities, then the fuel is free, not much emission, and there's no more dollar involved. Thank you. Okay, I guess all questions have been covered. So that ends our press conference. We thank our media colleagues for joining us and our panelists for the time. We also wish to acknowledge the representatives of Radio TV Malacanang uh, for joining us and members of the Philippine Information Agency staff writers. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Please